What is the story with this allulose stuff? So allulose is um, actually is a sugar. It's a rare natural sugar. It's kind of a, a cousin of, or let's say a twin of fructose. I think it's a three um, C three epimer of fructose. So mm. I think the way to kind of like break it down and think about it is um, if, if fructose is like let's say the evil twin. Allulose is the good twin, but they're very similar molecules, but allulose isn't processed by your body like fructose. So to conceptualize what the benefits might be, um, one could say, okay, what what are you you gaining by just removing the fructose? So that's one element of it. Mm. Is fructose uniquely metabolically harmful? And I actually have done like a YouTube series on, you know, going organ system by organ system, showing how actually, um, you know, fructose can play a role in the process of dementia, including fructose that's made in situ in the brain. So your body can actually make its own fructose via the polyol pathway, and you can ingest fructose. But it has unique properties as well. The metabolism of fructose is very fascinating. So... The um, there's this one process of energy production in the cell called glycolysis. Maybe people remember that from eighth grade biology. I'm sorry if I'm causing PT- PTSD, but nope. <laughs> the first enzyme in that pathway, say you're breaking down glucose, um, what it does is it adds a phosphate group. It's called hexokinase, and it uh, traps the glucose in the cell. Um, but normally in biology, what happens is with these enzymes, they'll have an, an off switch, which is part of a negative feedback system. So if you present, you know, produce a lot more product, it will kind of feed back to turn off the enzyme so things don't get out of control. But fructose is unique in that the enzyme doesn't have that off switch. It's called ketohexokinase. Um, and because it doesn't have an off switch, if you have a lot of fructose and it goes down that pathway, what ends up happening is you actually get intracellular, so within the cell, energy depletion. The ketohexokinase phosphorylates the fructose a lot, and ATP levels drop. That's that kind of cell's energy currency. And then um, what will happen is the AMP, which is a breakdown product, builds up. That can generate intracellular uric acid. That can cause the translocation of something called NADP oxidase 4 to the mitochondria, damage your mitochondria, cause things like citrate to build up, causing de novo lipogenesis. All these jargony terms aren't things you have to understand and or can go to some of my videos where I break them down. Yeah, I need English. Bottom line, fructose has a unique metabolism and it isn't a matter of just calories, but it's a matter of it can cause things that are uniquely metabolically harmful if you have high enough doses. I will caveat, I'm not saying that fruit is bad. You shouldn't like not have blueberries or a banana. Your body actually in your small intestine processes a lot of fructose to other sugars and lower doses aren't necessarily harmful. Although we eat now sucrose, which includes fructose, that's table sugar, and fructose itself at very high doses to the point where it is damaging. Um, and there are schools of thought that um, fructose is contributing um, especially to um, the obesity epidemic. I don't think that captures the whole picture perfectly. But point being, um, fructose is not just bad because of calories. It has unique metabolic properties that can make it uniquely damaging to the body, um, in part by generation of new fat, so-called ectopic fat, but also damage certain organ systems, including even the brain. Um, Now, allulose tastes similar. It's, again, the cousin of fructose, but your body can't break it down. Um, Generally, in biology, you can think about it like there's left and right-handed molecules, and your body's enzymes can only work on one form. So if you use the other hand, you might be able to taste something, but it's not necessarily um, uniquely damaging. So I think one aspect, let's call this the tip of the iceberg, is that you can get rid of the fructose if you use allulose. You can therefore also reduce the caloric intake, so there's that, and you're not getting the damaging effects of fructose, which also means you have better blood uh, sugar control. So you're not your blood sugar is not spiking and falling. In fact, um, if you have, you know, I know patients with type 1 diabetes that can use these quite um, fine. And actually, it actually attenuates blood sugar spikes when there is sucrose. So what I mean by that is it's not just neutral, but if you have this and you have sugar, your blood sugar response to the sugar is lower than if you just had the sugar. This has been shown now in randomized control trials as well. Um, so we can link those below. Um, so if you mix this with a regular chocolate bar? If you had this and you had a regular chocolate bar together, the blood sugar spike would be less than if you just had the chocolate bar. No okay. Shit. That's fucking insane. And it actually, I mean, there are really- It seems unique- too good to be true. So 
there are unique metabolic properties um, of natural compounds that we can exploit. One really cool one that I think is this is actually an inducer of um, GLP-1. So I think we even mentioned earlier the GLP-1 receptor agonist class of hormones are what um, so oh, sorry, are the like Ozempic and Wagovi, the weight loss drugs. Right. Those drugs are trying to mimic this hormone called GLP-1. Allulose actually causes the release of GLP-1. Um, and that's been shown, um, and it acts via the um, uh, vagus nerve, the wandering nerve, the 10th cranial nerve, to um, have effects on brain activity, hunger, um, and metabolic status. So that's just kind of one example of weird things that allulose can do. There are other things that we're studying or I'm, I'm, I'm peripherally associated with that I can't talk about. But I've been fascinated by it too because I'm one of those people, first of all, I have no drive for sweet myself, so I'm not looking for like an excuse to have something sweet. And I'm typically of the opinion that, you know, I'm not saying foods that contain fructose are terrible. Don't not eat blueberries because I'm talking about this, but I am saying it has unique metabolic properties and it's something that all things being equal, I think most people should reduce. And this allulose-based um, product provides an option. And on top of that, the science is really, really interesting around, oh, oh yeah, and then the Diet Coke thing. Like, things like aspartame and stuff, the the type of so on population like level data it doesn't show that it promotes weight loss so the benefit is questionable yes it doesn't have calories and you could you know try to presume something from a short term study about chronic effects but i don't think that's fair as well there are data in humans that it screws up the microbiome and causes glucose intolerance They've done studies. This was out of the Weizmann Institute in Israel. So they've done these kind of studies. They also do them in mice where they can do germ-free mice and fecal transplants. So they can actually show it's screwing up the microbiome because you can like mm. feed one group of mice. Or actually what you can do is you can take, they did this. Um, humans who don't usually have things like, I think this was actually using sucralose at this point in the study. It's been a while since I read it. But you give humans who don't have these sweeteners, these sweeteners, then they become... Um, more glucose intolerant on um, glucose tolerance tests. And then what you can do is you can transplant the feces from the humans before and after they were exposed to mice. And what you can actually find is that after the exposure, the mice will pick up the glucose phenotype of the human. So the mice would be, you know, they get the human's feces. The, the humans haven't been exposed to the sucralose or maybe it was saccharin. It was one of the S ones. Mm. And then the mice, you know, are okay with respect to glucose tolerance. But if you gave those mice the feces of the humans after they were exposed, if the humans then became glucose intolerant because they had the saccharin or the sucralose, I forget, forget which one it was, I think it was actually saccharin, then the mice pick up the phenotype, which shows that it was mediated by changes in the microbiome because the mice never were exposed to the um, right. non nutritive sweetener. And we see similar things with aspartame. Again, biological plausibility breaks down to phenylalanine. I mean, even if like to show it has biological um uh, effects there are like disease conditions like phenylketonuria where you cannot have aspartame like if, right. if you have a kid that's test positive for this and they're screened for like the first thing the doctor will say is like your kid cannot have diet coke mm -hmm. like it is terrible for them now most people definitely do not have that condition point being it's not just a neutral substance and then yeah with these this allulose product or the allulose in general i think it has fascinating biological properties a lot of the uh, experiments have been done in mice but i think there are more and more um, data coming out showing that it has um, unique metabolic effects, like promoting this GLP-1 release. Um, and um, yeah, I'm trying to tread around it a little bit because I'm not sure what I'm actually at liberty to talk about with unpublished data. Mm -hmm. But we can link that GLP-1 paper. Actually, I think I have a YouTube video called Nature's Sweet Ozempic from a while back that we can link as well where I break down a little bit of that effect. I think it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. They taste delicious. It is delicious. It really tastes like chocolate. Yeah, it's and also, amazing. I'll just put a plug in. You know, I really, this is the first company that I've really been affiliated with, and I, I, I'm not a, like- Full disclosure. A, full disclosure. Well, yeah, I, I think they're they're in the process of bringing me on, but um, I like the team. Dom's on the team, Ben Bickman's on the team, Richard Johnson's on the team, and the CEO, this guy named Steve Hanley, is just the most enthusiastic, sweet guy with a heart of gold whose mission is, I think, really pure. He's not in it to make money for himself. He's incredibly mm. generous, and he really just wants to like get sugar out of the food supply as much as possible and replace it with something that is a better alternative. 
So is there any potential downside to allulose that you found? The that? only downside is um, at higher doses, some people have uh, a GI intolerance. I would say that happens with a lot of sweeteners. Yeah. But um, some people just might have like like loose stools or something. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, I've only seen um, honestly benefits in the data. Um, so I think it's a very cool product. I think the research on it is. Um, burgeoning. And um, if I were to endorse one non-nutritive sweetener, it would definitely be allulose. 